Thank you for joining me on my masterclass. Now today I'm going to be teaching you what to do with money so that you are never poor again and that you never have to work in your life. What to do with money so that you're never poor again and you never have to work in your life. Now the whole idea, the whole concept of money, it was formed at a time when there was no inflation. I'm not saying there was low inflation. No, there was absolutely no inflation. This was before the industrial age. So money was very secure. There was no inflation. So you could go 250 years and then the price of bread was the same. So there was absolutely no inflation. That was the period when money was formed. Now, you have to understand the human race is dynamic. Things change. What happened is that we had an industrial revolution in the 18th century, it started in the 17th century, but then you know it really took off in the 18th century. And then that industrial revolution brought about a period of great growth. And to power that growth, we needed credit. And so banks started to give out credit. You know, you had the Rothschilds, and then you had other, well, I say, families in Europe that were giving out loans. So if you understand that, you begin to understand where interest rates started to come from. And then because interest rates started to be attached to these loans, you know, you had a situation whereby inflation began to come up and raise its ugly head. And that's when the prices of goods began to change. So maybe, and then when inflation first started, it was actually a manageable inflation. So over 50 years, the price of a product or a good or a service will remain the same. But then as technology and as the industrial revolution began to spread worldwide, began to be global, then things started to heat up. And so you had inflation becoming something that was gradually becoming what we had today. So it was a gradual process. So when money was founded, when money was formed, when money was established as a means of exchange, because inflation was non-existent, it was the practice to put money in banks because it was stable. Banks were stable. That was the practice to put money in banks. You know, whether it was in the form of gold, whether it was in the form of silver, or whatever it was, it was just the practice to put money in banks. But now, with inflation so very, very fast paced, putting money in banks does not make sense. Because if you put money in a bank, and then the rate of inflation is such that it begins to reduce the amount of the value of that money in your bank. You know, it's not, doesn't make sense. It's like putting an ice block, an ice cube in a hot desert. It's just going to gradually melt away. So if you take the United States, for instance, where the inflation rate is just, you know, just right now below 6%. And then the highest savings interest rate you're going to get from any bank is going to be from Goldman Sachs with their Apple card now, where you're going to get 4.15. So let's say you have an inflation rate of just under 6%. Let's say it's 6%. And then you've got a savings interest rate of 4.15%. If your money is sitting in a bank, even if you're getting that 4.15%, you're still losing money. So money no longer belong to banks. It no longer belongs to banks. Things are changing. We are not living in the same industrial age mentality or period when it was safe to put money in banks. No, the world has changed. We are now living in what we call a knowledge worker age. We are living in an information age where things change, where 24 hours is a long time. It's no longer just politics where 24 hours is a long time. Even in business, 24 hours is a long time. So if you are a regular subscriber on this channel, you see that I give you guys cryptos to buy. But I tell you that, look, you've got to buy and sell those cryptos within 24 hours. That, I mean, that was unheard of about 100 years ago, even 30 years ago. But that, that's the situation of things right now. So putting money in banks does not make sense. When you have money, what should you do with money? The best thing to do with money, because you've got to understand, the rich don't work for money. They have money work for them. It's poor people who work for money. And then when you all work for money, all the poor people, they work for money, and they gather their money, and they put their money in the bank, it's the rich who go to that bank and take all the money that you've gathered together and use it to do business. So you have to start thinking like rich and start making money and start using that money for business. So the very first thing that you want to do 
when you have money is to put your money in real estate no matter how small no matter where it is start with real estate and if you can start with real estate maybe because the money is not enough then what you want to do is that you want to invest to invest so previously we used to save to invest so maybe you wanted to buy a house and the house was a hundred thousand dollars but you had ten thousand dollars and you had an income so you wanted to start saving to invest but because banks have been so ridiculed by the inflation rate which is highly and surpasses the rate of interest you don't want to be keep your money in the bank and save to invest no it's antithetical you're not going to be able to get enough money so right now you want to save to invest so how can you save how can you sorry you want to invest to invest so how can you invest to invest there are things that you put your money in you put your money in stocks not just any kind of stocks but growth stocks now there's a difference between just a regular stock and a growth stock a growth stock is a stock in a startup that has a lot of promise a startup that has a lot of promise so for instance right now open source ai is a startup that has a lot of promise you know now if you put your money in that you know in that kind of business obviously your money is going to explode because ai is the emerging technology of the future so you want to put your money in growth stocks and growth stocks tend to be in the nasdaq so the nasdaq is a place where you find a lot of these growth stocks because a lot of growth stocks in this day and age are technology technology driven stocks and the Nasdaq is a place for technology driven stocks because tech stocks tend to be capital light. So inflation, recession, and all the shocks in the economy does not affect them because they're very, very capital light. Unlike maybe a, an oil company or a commodity company or like something that does maybe DHL, you know, they have planes, they've got offices all around. Those are capital heavy stocks. So you want to start investing in Nasdaq or tech stocks because they are the best growth stocks available. And then another thing you want to put your money in, you want to put your money in index funds. Why do you want to put your money in index funds? You want to put your money in index funds because over the last 98 years, the compound annual growth rate, that is the CAGR, compound annual growth rate of the S&P 500 has been 12%. So if you have inflation at 6% and you have the CAGR of the S&P 500 at 12%, that means it's double the rate of inflation, that means it's a good place to put your money. So you invest your money in an index fund. Now, for most index funds, if you want to invest that if you want to invest with a broker, with a brokerage firm to put your money in an index fund, they're going to tell you that you need at least 500 from between $500 to about $5,000. But you can actually subscribe to the newsletter of the S&P 500 and via this website. The website is going to flash up on the screen. And then you can actually mirror their trade. So you can start trading with as little as $5, $10, $15. There are apps like eToro, like Chaka, like Bamboo. Depending on the country that you're in, you can find out the apps that work in your country and then start trading in U.S. stocks because there is no citizenship requirement to trade in the U.S. stock market. So you can be anywhere in the world apart from countries where the U.S. has placed sanctions on countries like Russia, Iran, North Korea. If you're not in those countries, you can trade in U.S. stocks with, with these apps, especially Eto. So you trade in the S&P 500 because you're guaranteed to get an annual growth rate of your maybe about 12%. It might be a little lower sometimes, might be a little higher. And then at the same time, your stocks are also increasing in value. Or you want to invest in mutual funds. You invest in mutual funds. A lot of mutual funds, you know, you look at them and see what their CAGR is. If their CAGR is not much higher than the rate of inflation, then there's no point in investing in them. Or you want to invest in treasury bonds or CDs. Now, CDs in some countries, they're called fixed deposit. In America, they're called CDs, certificate of deposit. Or you want to invest in a real estate investment trust. Or the best one, in my opinion, of all of these, you want to invest in a gold ETF. Now, there are other ETFs, there are silver ETFs, there are commodity ETFs, but the best ETFs, from my experience, is a gold ETF because the kinds of returns that gold ETFs they give are very, very high. So, a gold ETF. So, your money should not be in banks. That's a poor person's mentality. You have to think like the old, established, rich, Jewish, and white Anglo-Saxon Protestant families. You have to think smart. So, don't put your money in banks. Put your money in investments. Now, 
initially, you know, in the past, maybe like 50 years ago, 20 years ago, in fact, even 10 years ago, people used to put, even these wealthy people, these wealthy white um, the Saxon Protestant families, wealthy Jewish families, they used to put some money in a bank, which they called emergency funds. Emergency funds. Nowadays, you don't even need to put money in the, your emergency fund in the bank. Why? Because the way investments have been structured is that you can liquidate all or some or just a fraction of your investment within hours. So just imagine that maybe you're investing in an S&P 500 index fund, like maybe the Vanguard Russell. You can actually tell them that, oh, you know what? I have an emergency. I need to liquidate like 1% of my holdings. And then they're going to liquidate it for you in less than an hour. You get your money in your checking account. So there's no point in even having money in your savings account or in your checking account for emergency. There's no point. All your money should be invested. So at any point in time, your money is actually growing faster than the rate of inflation. That's how people make money. Now, there's also, there are also some other assets. So when you have your money in real estate, you have your money in an S&P 500, a mutual fund, you have your money in treasury bonds, you have your money in CDs, you have your money in rates, in ETFs, and other, uh, other kinds of gold ETFs and other kinds of ETFs, then you might want to also consider some short-term investments, short-term investments. And what are these short-term investments? Cryptos. So, if you have a real estate investment like I do, what happens is that if you're in America or in Europe, you're going to have access to what they call a HELOC. A HELOC is a home equity line of credit. HELOC. I'm going to say it one more time. A home equity line of credit. So from your HELOC, at any point in time, you can go and take money. I can take as much as 500000 from my own HELOC. And then with that money, I can go on the crypto exchanges and then after I do indexing, because you should never invest in crypto unless you've done invest, unless you've done indexing. So after you've done your indexing, so you know which crypto is likely to go up and stay up. So you can now begin to use that money to invest in the short term, 24 hours, maximum 48 hours, sometimes a week. So you invest in crypto. So you say, okay, I've done my indexing. I have indexing right here. I'm looking at it. This crypto is likely to go up and this crypto is likely to stay up. And so you invest your money. When you get a between 50 to 35 percent margin, you remove your money. And then if you do this, that 500,000 in a month's time, you're going to double it like I have done. And I've given you evidence on this channel. That's how you make money and you don't have to work again. I don't work. My work right now is traveling from country to country. And you guys see me. I travel first class, British Airways. If they don't have British Airways, okay, then I might go on another airline. But first class, I travel. Sometimes I go on private islands. I don't steal money. I'm not into fraud. This is how I make money, what I've just told you here. It sounds simple, but here's the thing. If you do it on a regular and consistent basis, you will also get wealthy like me. So that that's how you, put, how you need to put your money to work so that you don't have to work and you're never poor again. Now, my name is Wayne Amalke. If you watch this video and you have questions arising from this video, Put your questions in the comment section of this video by Staff of Good to be, and I'll do my best to respond to each and every category as I usually do. But then you got to remember, I do not have a WhatsApp for a Telegram channel, or a Gmail address, email address. Scammers see that my videos tend to go viral, so they created a number of fake YouTube profiles, and they're going to approach you with my image in, on the faces of their YouTube profiles, telling you helpline, guideline, contact me at this Gmail address, contact me at this WhatsApp address, contact me at this Telegram uh, number. If you do, they're going to ask you to pay a $1,000. They're going to lie to you and say that they work for me. And when you pay the money, that's the last you're going to hear from them. Then you will start chasing me all over social media. Say, Pastor Wendell, you've duped me. And that's why I'm giving you this money. Now, this is your personal perspective with the monkey saying, God bless you. I know travels all around the world. I hope you get inspired about what you see. I was full of greatness. Reno is a master. Only one man against the old world in large. Fighting with the monsters. Poverty, I can't stand. That's why Reno is a